I'm working on some non-hormonal alternatives for women with hot flashes. I'm working on um, with Gary Elkins. He's in, at Baylor University in Waco, Texas, and we're working on a, his clinical hypnosis protocol. We're trying to simplify it a little bit for women to see if um, a fewer number of clinical hypnosis sessions works just as well or whether we can deliver it over the telephone rather than making women come into a clinic for it. So yesterday I presented on the 2015 NAMS position statement on the non-hormonal treatment of vasomotor symptoms and I went through the evidence that was in that position statement about what we, what the expert panel concluded should be recommended, not used at this time, um, or not recommended for women. And there was two cognitive behavioral um, or mind-body interventions. One is cognitive behavioral therapy and one is clinical hypnosis. And those have level one evidence that they help alleviate um, vasomotor symptoms. And then certainly the FDA approved paroxetine and some of the other antidepressants um, mm -hmm. seem to be effective, um, as well as gabapentinoids and clonidine are useful for women. So we wrote the guidelines so that they would really be useful for women. So that, um, in fact, I've already had some emails from a couple women who've told me how useful the article was for them and that um, they've actually taken it to their healthcare providers to share with them. Um, and so women can look at um, what might be useful for them and see what makes sense for them to try. I think in the past we've recommended things that aren't necessarily helpful or that we don't have good data on. So we often will tell women, oh, avoid what triggers your hot flashes or try things that cool you off. And we don't really have any evidence that that helps. And I think when we tell women that, it delays them getting treatments that are more effective. We're really trying to get providers and, and to, to go to these recommended therapies right away. Um, certainly hormone therapy is um, useful, and if a woman doesn't want to take that or has medical contraindications against taking it, this gives them some other different treatment options to try. So I'm, I'm trying to develop some resource materials for women so that we can take all of this information. I mean, we looked at 350 research articles and a hundred review articles to distill it down into this one position statement. And uh, what I'm going to work on in the springtime is trying to create some kind of a resource for women to make this information easily digestible and useful for them. It might be online, it might be a book, it might be some artwork, I'm not quite sure what it will be. This has just been a really terrific meeting. Um, I think it's really exciting that the hormone position statement is coming out um, because really that will be such a great companion with the non-hormonal position statement. We presented those in back-to-back -back sessions yesterday and uh, a lot of people came up afterwards and said how useful those would be. So that's really exciting to me. We just heard an excellent talk on um, soy, um, which was just fascinating. And I think, um, and even in our position statement, some of the S equal derivatives of soy might be promising for hot flashes. They need a little bit more research. Um, so it was really exciting to, to hear that talk as well. I think two things. One is that women's experiences at menopause are really variable. And um, the importance of asking women about their own individual experiences is really important. And then continuing to ask again, right, as those experiences change over time. Uh, sometimes women try some treatments that might work for a little while and then feel almost as if they've stopped working because their symptom experience changes. And so um, continuing to reevaluate those women is really important.